So that will be a special service that will be conducted right after the Friday evening service concludes. So this year we decided not to have a surprise as to who these people are so that you can all know and get your friends to attend the ceremony, which has been waiting around since, by the way, February. So uh, these plaques are now getting dusty and they belong to the owners and as well as the, the honor of being nominated and awarded the Kavod Award for this year. So one of the awards is being awarded to Judy Fagan and the other one is to Bob Cole. And congratulations to both of you. And we look forward to having your ceremony next Friday night after service. One other announcement that I want to make, and this is a very important announcement. Um, this past week, the executive board, along with others, met to discuss opening the temple and when we could ever get together again. Uh, we have decided to be overly cautious on how we handle our situation. And so we will continue with summer hours starting June and July. And we will keep abreast of everything that's going on. Uh, and make decisions in conjunction with the Judea Judaic view towards the sanctity of human life, bokath nefesh, and that is the primary concern, not getting together, not our, not our communal prayers, but the pres preservation and sanctification of every life. That will determine when, if we will reopen the temple and have services again. With that, we need to have a prayer for our temple. As our temple welcomes the Shabbat, we recite blessings for the survival of our temple and our temple membership. Let us pray that our temple be a place where we will experience happiness and enjoy good health, be a place of concernment, a place to express our generosity and receive and give hope. May our temple be a temple of creativity and kindness. And may those who are members of our temple and their guests, the only blessing and peace, and let us say, Amen. Thank you very much. With that, Rabbi Kaplan, it's all yours. Thank you, Marvin, and thank you for those announcements. Uh, we're looking forward to the Shavuot service, which we, uh, which we will do, as Marvin said, in conjunction with Bet Emet, and uh, that should be an interesting uh, we're going to have a roundtable discussion on the uh, on the Book of Ruth, and uh, then we'll have a very short uh, Shavuot service. Uh, and also Mazal Tov to the winners of the Kavod Award this year. Uh, and uh, we're looking forward to the uh, to the uh, cer ceremony and celebration next Friday night. Uh, um, I now ask everyone to turn to page five hundred and seventy for the counting of the Omer. Um, as you have uh, figured out, the Omer is read until the day before Shavuot, which is this coming Thursday. So this is the last Friday night that we'll be, we'll be counting the Omer until next year. Hineni muchanu mizuman lekayem mitzvata se shel svirat Omer. We are ready to fulfill the mitzvah of counting the Omer. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu al tzvirat ha'omer. Our praise to you, Adonai, sovereign of all, who hallows us with mitzvot, commanding us to count the omer. Hayom arba'im v'arba yom shehem she shavuot v'shte yamim la'omer. Today is the 44th day, which is six weeks and two days uh, of the Omer, and let us say, Amen. Now, uh, in um, this is Memorial Day weekend, and uh, in some ways, it's it's a, a more somber Memorial Day weekend than is usual because uh, all the stores are not having the sales that they normally have, and the um, amusement parks cannot have all the. Uh, the rides and the activities that you normally associate with Memorial Day. And so therefore, it gives us perhaps a chance to refocus on the original meaning of this day and of this weekend. And with that in mind, I'd like to uh, offer this prayer. 
Eloheinu v'lehevatinu v'imatinu, our God and God of our ancestors, watch over those who defend our nation, shield them from harm, and guide them in all their pursuits. Grant their commanders wisdom and discernment in their time of preparation and on the battlefield. Should battle erupt, may their victory be swift and complete. May the loss of life for any of your creations be avoided. Grant healing to those who are wounded and safe redemption to those who fall into enemy hands. For those who, are, who have lost their lives, grant consolation and your presence to those who are close to them. We also ask that you stand with our president and all our military leaders. Guide them in their decision-making so that your will is implanted within their minds. May it be your will that world hostilities come to a rapid end and that those in service are returned safely to their families. We pray that freedom will dawn for the oppressed and fervently we hope that the vision of your prophet will come to be. Let nation not lift up sword against nation, nor learn war anymore. May this vision come to pass speedily and in our day, and let us all say, Amen. Amen. Uh, we pray that this Memorial Day may see a new perspective on conflict and war, and that we may begin to transcend uh, the, the uh, situations that have created um, the terrible tragedies that we have witnessed through the 20th and into the 21st century. And now, on a happier note, we join together in Shalom Aleichem on page 142. I'm going to ask you vis um, uh, virtually to uh, form a circle and hold hands. And uh, you can hold hands with people who are your neighbors, um, um, who live closer to you, or just the people you imagine in the sanctuary would have been sitting or standing near you. Page 142, we welcome Shabbat. Shalom Aleichem. officially inaugurate the Shabbat with the lighting of the Shabbat candles on page 120. I'd like to ask Mantha Kaiser to light the lights of Shabbat on behalf of the entire BBYO, our teenage youth group, which has just started in the past year. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who hollows us with this boat, commanding us to kindle the light of Shabbat. <laughs> 
Thank you, Samantha, for that. And uh, you may have noticed she's got a very interesting match there that she's using uh, that in involves very high technology. Uh, we turn now to page 219, Let the Soul, which uh, one of our bar mitzvah celebrators from this week, Harrison Schumacher, will recite page 219. Let the soul of everything alive bless your name, Adonai, our God, and the spirit of all flesh glorify and exalt your name forever, O Sovereign. Transcending space and time, you, are, you alone are God. We have no sovereign besides you. God of the first and the last, God of all creatures, master of all generations, who is praised in a multitude of praises, who guides the world with abundant loving kindness, and all creatures with mercy. Adonai neither slumbers nor sleeps. God awakens the sleeping, arouses those who slumber, gives speech to the mute, and God loosens the bonds of captives. God supports the fallen and strengthens those who are bent over. You alone do we acknowledge. Amen. And thank you, Harrison, and I'm going to see you tomorrow morning bright and early. <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> uh, Andre made it out like it was at 4 a.m. or something like that. <laughs> uh, but uh, but it will be uh, will be in our sanctuary in person, just a handful of people uh, at uh, 10 a.m. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. And Mazel Tov on your inauguration into adult Judaism, and may you find the Jewish religion and the Jewish people to be satisfying spiritually, culturally, uh, and educationally. And now we turn to L'Chadu D, page 138. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, Cantor. Shabbat Shalom, Rabbi. Page 145. You may notice I'm announcing every page, and we're doing that to make it easier for those on Zoom, as well as those who are calling in but cannot see. Teach me, O God, a blessing, a prayer, on the mystery of a withered leaf, on ripened fruit so fair, on the freedom to see, to sense, to breathe, to know, to hope, to despair. 
Teach my lips a blessing, a hymn of praise, as each morning and night you renew your days. Lest my day be today as the one before, lest routine set my ways. We continue with the Borchu, the call for worship, page 146. Continue with the Shema, the Declaration of Faith on pages 152 153. <laughs> Now we continue with the Vahafta, page 154. <laughs> Behayu Hadvarim Paele, Asher Anohi Mitzvaha, Hayom Aleva Beha, Vishina Tam Lebeneha, Vidibar Tam Bam, Vishitaha Viveteha, Uvlekteha Vadere, Ubshaha Ukumeha, Ukshar Tam Leot Oyadeha, Behayu Betutafo Tene Neha. Uptaktam al mezuzo betecha uvisharecha laman tis karu vasitem ekomis vatai vietem kiddoshim elohem ani adonai elohem asher hotseitem mir tis raim lehiot lechem elohim ani adonai elohem you shall love Adonai, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Take to heart these instructions which I charge you this day. Impress them upon your children. Recite them when you stay at home and when you are when and when you are awake. When you lie down and when you get up, find them as a sign on your hand and let them serve as a symbol on your forehead. Inscribe them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Thus you shall remember to observe all of my commandments and be holy to unto your be holy to your God. I am Adonai, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am Adonai, your God. Adonai Elohechem Emet. And Sarah is having her bat mitzvah tomorrow at 1 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> is that right, Sarah? Yeah. Um, and I offered her the option of waiting a year, and uh, 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 she could come every Friday night and recite all the prayers for us and learn more and more. And she said that in the end, she's ready and she's willing to go right now. And so like with Harrison, we're going to gather just a very small group in the sanctuary, but in, in real time, you know, actually uh, maybe six or eight feet away, but, but in the same sanctuary together. And tomorrow we're going to celebrate her bat mitzvah. And so, even though there has been all sorts of obstacles, most notably the coronavirus, Harrison and Sarah have both made it to their bar and bat mitzvah weekend. And so we want to wish them both mazal tov. Um, we continue now our service with the Micha Mocha Vinemar, page 158. All right, Rabbi, get ready to dance, all right? But you don't want me to sing. Yalla la 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 la, 
159, sing the song of men and women joined in understanding and respect, the song of God's miracles, an earth protected and cherished, a gift for our children and the generations to come, the song of a land once ravished by war, now quiet and content, her soldiers home to leave no more, the song of a world redeemed, the song of peace. We continue page 160. Ufrot Salenu is part of the Hashkivenu. We now turn to the Mishaber from page 371. Uh, you can type in the names of anybody you'd like us to pray for, for any sort of healing. Uh, we, of course, continue to pray for all of the victims of the coronavirus, on, uh, those who are simply slightly ill, as well, as well as those who are in critical condition. So please type in the names of those that you'd like us to pray for, no matter what, their, um, what the reason for their infirmity and whatever type of problem, uh, physical or emotional, they may have. We want to focus all of the energies that we can possibly do um, um, and take our spiritual strength and direct them toward helping to heal and to nurture. We join in the Misha Berach, composed by Debbie Friedman, page 371. <laughs> May the source of strength who bless the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say Amen. Bless those in need of healing with refuah shlema. The renewal of body, the renewal of spirit. And let us say, Amen. We pause now for a moment of silent prayer and meditation.
canter. Oh, shalom, shalom, Shabbat shalom, everyone. <laughs> um, we are facing another week of virtual services, and uh, I think we're getting accustomed to it. So uh, here we are. And um, it's a little hard to see your faces, so it's harder to interact with you. But I think you can see my face hopefully pretty well. And uh, um, we will continue this way at least through the summer. Um, this week we start a new uh, book of the Torah, the Bamidbar. Um, in English, the word, uh, the word, the book is translated as Numbers, the Book of Numbers, uh, because the beginning of the book and much of the book talks about specific numbers. Uh, and uh, we're now doing Torah study every week, and in Torah study we talked about how those numbers may or may not be exactly accurate. And uh, we'd love to have more of you come to the Torah study, so please think about coming next week. And uh, we have some very good discussions, and you can bring your own lunch. Um, the Hebrew word bamidbar doesn't mean numbers at all. It means in the desert. And that's really the, the conceptual theme of the book. And what was interesting is that we saw that the, ne the, the, the Sinai Desert really is quite different. Uh, there's a northern part um, along the Mediterranean Sea, which is quite beautiful, actually. And there's endless stretches of sand dunes, uh, shifting sand, and just tremendous amounts of sand, you know, piled up high on these dunes. Uh, in the middle of Sinai, there's a, a very different topography. It's jagged limestone cliffs and... Uh, mountains with vast rocky plateaus between them. And in the far south of the Sinai Desert are tall granite mountains, valleys and gorges that are eroded from the melt of winter rains and snow. And they've got, that, that's where King Solomon's um, uh, copper mines or, or some of his copper mines uh, could be found. And you can see the, the rich red texture of the copper and also turquoise. There's a lot of minerals in that part. So whether you're northern Sinai, central Sinai, or southern Sinai makes quite a difference into, into how it looks. And if you've got some good photos, um, an expert can tell you right away what part of Sinai you're at. But... What they all share is that it's all barren. There's very little um, um, uh, trees and green. There's no grass. It's a little bit like Arizona in some ways. Okay, that was a joke. And, uh, um, and the Israelites, according to the Torah in the book of Numbers, spent 40 years wandering around the desert. Now, as we said in Torah study, they didn't actually spend... 40 years constantly walking around from place to place. There was at least a couple years that they did that, but for many of the years, they were relatively settled in a town in the eastern part of Sinai called Kadesh Barnea. Uh, so things may have been a little bit more settled than just completely wandering. 
but they were very much in an intermediate phase. They had left Egypt, they had left slavery, and yet they had not entered the promised land. And we discussed different theories about why the Israelites spend so much time in the desert. Uh, one of them is there's a practical reason. They needed to build up their military. Uh, you can't attack, you know, entering into the land of Israel required fighting the Canaanites, the Philistines, all sorts of tribes that had been settled there. And they had standing armies, they had technology, they had tanks, they had planes. The Israelites didn't have any of this stuff. So they had to start building up their military, uh, finding suppliers, uh, training, getting prepared, toughening up. But that's not, of course, really the, the, the emphasis that I want to put on this story. It's, 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 it's not a history lesson. What happened or didn't happen in Sinai is a very little concern to me. What I'm concerned about is the, 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 the desert as metaphor. Uh, what does it mean metaphorically to spend 40 years, an entire generation in the desert, Bamidbar? Um, being in the desert is like a, a certain um, psychological state. Uh, in anthropology, uh, they call this a liminal state. You're not yet where you want to be, but you're not where you started out. It's a little bit, uh, Sarah and Harrison are both in this stage. They're not, they're not children. Uh, they're definitely not children but they're not fully grown up. Uh, Harrison's a little older than Sarah, a couple years older, but both of them are still looking forward to what they're going to be when they grow up. And so similarly, the Israelites were thinking about, well, what are we going to be when we grow up? Or what are we going to be when we settle down in the land, the, the land of milk and honey? the land that God has promised us, the God that pro God promised our ancestors, the, the, the ultimate destination. And I would argue that there's a certain sense of wilderness that each of us must go through. Um, it's, it's a process. It's getting to where we, we want to be, where we feel comfortable, where we feel that we are doing what we can for ourselves and for others, because we all know that you really can't help other people until you help yourself. If you're going out there to help other people with all sorts of, of unfulfilled personal needs, you're gonna, you can't help but carry over that agenda into what you're doing with other people. And that's not going to be healthy in the long run. And so first, you have to take care of yourself. You have to grow up. You have to figure out what it is that each of us need, each of us want, how we can get maybe not everything that we want, but at least the, the most important thing. And then we can settle down individually as people. And it is at that stage that we can help others, that we can mentor, that we can nurture, that we can go out to do mitzvot that benefit the community, that benefit the world, that Maybe maybe we can't change the whole world. Maybe we can't change the whole community. Maybe we can just do something nice for one person, for one neighbor, for one friend, for one family member. And I think each of us knows that when we're able to to do something good, particularly um, not 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 something um, uh, material, but something emotional and something long term where we're able to teach somebody, we know how gratifying that can be. And so we all need to spend time in the wilderness. And I would argue that actually going out into the wilderness, as I've done with many of you, and I, if, if anyone wants to go hiking early in the morning, uh, let's do it. Just drop me a line and we'll arrange on a maybe Monday morning. Uh, early, like 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 4 a.m., as long as it's just the sun is starting to come up and we can see our way between the cacti, 
then let's do it. Because it's not just a question of exercise. It's not just about seeing the pretty landscape. There's something out there in the desert that has a certain spiritual uh, quality that enables us to, to really get in touch with what's important inside our own souls. And so with that, I wish everyone a Shabbat Shalom. Um, and uh, the cantor, in honor of my sermon, uh, is going to sing Unnameable God, which comes from Rabbi, which was put together by Rabbi Judith Z. Abrams. And I knew Rabbi Abrams. She passed away tragically after a, 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 fight, a fighting an illness for many, many years. Uh, she was an adult education specialist in Houston, Texas. And I, I put, put together a, a, a collection um, uh, on, on, on prayer uh, for the, um, uh, in the reform movement called Platforms and Prayer Books. And she contributed one of the essays. And I was also uh, honored to hear her speak at a, at a rabbinic conference in, in West Florida a number of years ago. And so the unnameable God uh, Rabbi Corten. You can't refer to it. I don't need a promotion. Thank you. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> she has three uh, little readings in Mishkan Tefillah as well. They're beautifully poetic. Unnameable God, I feel you with me at a you are my food, my drink, my sunlight, and the air I breathe. You are the ground I have built on, and the beauty that rejoices my heart. I give thanks to you. confusion and for teaching me in the dark and showing me the path of life. I have come to the center of the universe. I rest in your We turn now to the Torah reading. We have Torah blessers are David and Michelle Gluck, and the Torah reader will again be our educator, Andre Ivory. And so, David and Michelle, uh, whenever you're ready, uh, please begin the Torah blessing before the reading of the Torah. <laughs> Baruch Adonai Baruch Elam Ba'ed Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Bachar Banu Mikal Ho'ami Benatan Lanu Et Torah To Baruch Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Vida bear Adona El Moshe Bamid Bar Sinai Vel Kalmoed Vecha the Kodesh Hashini Vashana Hashini Let's say Tom Eretz Mitzrayim Lemor Su et Rosh Koledat Bene Israel and Mishpacha Tom Levehit Avotam Vamis Parshemot Kol Zachar the Google Tom Me Bain Aswim Shah 
Navamalaha Koyotse Tava be Israel Tifkudu Otam Otam Litivotam Atala Vacharon Vitremi Ish Ish Lamate Ish Rosh Levet Avotav Kuhu Ruchatarunai Eloheinu Melech Lam Asher Natan Lanu Tor Emet Bechaye Yolam Habetoheinu Baruchatarunai Notehator Amen And Yashar Koach um, And uh, thank you for that Torah reading and the blessings for Sefer Bamidbar, the Book of Numbers. Uh, we now turn to page 598 for the Mourners Kaddish. Uh, we're going to try something new this week to put the Mourners list of Mourners uh, of, of yard sites up on the screen. Uh, and in addition, uh, we're going to also ask you to type in additional names of those that you would like us to remember as we prepare for the Mourners Kaddish. Uh, I'd like to add the name of my aunt, Ruth Moskowitz. And uh, when, my, when I was 14, my mother became very sick with breast cancer. And my aunt and uncle uh, took care of me in Waterbury, Connecticut, um, myself and my sister. And uh, so had a great deal, a, a very important role in raising me. And I'm sure many of us have had relationships uh, like that with uh, relatives that were not our parents. Uh, and so I remember her on this particular Shabbat. And so continue to type the names of those of loved ones who have lost. And um, we will turn to page 598 to recite the Mourner's Kaddish. We'll put the yard site list up on the screen. We join together, uh, page 598. Yitzgadal v'yitzgadash shemei rabah. Balmah dibra krute v'yamlich malkute. V'chayichon v'yomechon v'bachaye dukol v'yit Yisrael. V'chala v'zman kariv v'yimru. Amen. 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 Yehe Shlomo Rabba Min Shemaya V'chayim Aleinu V'al Kol Yisrael V'yemru Ose Shalom Bim Ramav Huya Se Shalom Aleinu V'al Kol Yisrael V'yemru Amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all Israel and all humanity to which we say Amen. Rabbi, if I just may, uh, we had a technical issue with displaying the names just now, but if I could just quickly go through the list um, out of respect for the names on our yurt site list. Um, Blanche Abrams, mother of Rabbi Abrams, uh, Anna Ace um, observing is Judy Fagan, uh, Robert Blick, uncle of Babette Spatz, uh, Gina, Gina Michaels, wife of Steve Katz, Sandra Greenberg, sister of B. Eisenberg, Rose Jacobs, mother-in-law of Phyllis Jacobs, Diane Karsh, mother of Judy uh, Maggie, Maggie, Paul Cast, husband of Ruth Cast, David Leber, uncle of Shirley Barrow, Pearl Littman, mother of Leah uh, Center, Millie Lovinger, observing is David Lovinger, Devorah Malamuth, mother of Neil Malamuth, Ephraim Malamuth, father of Neil Malamuth, Doris Rosen, stepmother-in-law of uh, Elise Rosen, and Julian Tischler, father of Joan Rosen. Um, we pray for the souls of all of those departed and all of the people uh, whose names appeared on the message board as well. 
and all of those who are in our hearts, uh, as we say once more, Amen. Amen. We now turn to the Kiddush and the Hamotzi, pages 122, 123. Kya Cantor, um, I have my Kiddush cup, but I don't have any raisin challah, and uh, I'm hoping you'll share. I don't have the raisin one this week. Sorry, sorry about that. But I do have a wine that's made from grapes, so there you go. Baruch atah denar Eloheinu melech olam, Orei peri agafen, Omein. Baruch atah denar Eloheinu melech olam, Asher kidishanu b'mitzvoto v'ratzavanu, Bishabbat kod shobah v'ubratzon hivilanu, Zikaron l'mastay v'reishit, Iyu yom tefilah l'mikrei kodesh, Lecher l'siyad mitzvayim. Ivanu v'charta v'chanu kidashta mikomim. Bishabar kotshecha v'ahava u'vratzon inchaltanu. Baruch ata Adonai mikadesh ashtabat. Okay, and now just I got the plain, plain collar to my no raisins. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam amotzi lecha min haaretz amen. How's the challah? It's it's very good without the raisins too. You can taste the sweetness of the the, the challah itself. But I'm the only one in the sanctuary. There's a big oneg here, and I'm going to be able to eat the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll go through it tomorrow. <laughs> there may not be any left. <laughs> All right, have a, you and you and your two furry friends are going to have a good time. <laughs> ah, thank you. Um, and um, this comes to the end of our service. Uh, it seems like it went by very quickly. Um, and we want to once more wish a very, very hearty mazel tov to our bar mitzvah yes. and to our bat mitzvah. Yeah. And <laughs> oh, they're celebrating already, boy. Oh, my. Party Central over there. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> oh my, you look so happy. It's uh, that's really nice. Um, but I have, I have for tomorrow night. I have a reception at the country club, and I think I'm gonna be the only one there. Um, anyway, I want to wish you Shabbat Shalom and a Mazal Tov, uh, and to to everybody a, a Mazal Tov. Uh, we conclude with the Yivarech Echa and then Tfilat Adera. May God bless you and keep you. May God look kindly upon you and be gracious to you. May the radiance of God help to infuse your life with holiness and happiness, and may God give you health, happiness, and much, much love. And let us say, Amen. Amen. Be a 
blessing. Amen. 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 May this be a blessing. Amen. 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 May this be a blessing. Amen. May we be sheltered by the wings of peace. May we be kept in safety and in love. May grace and compassion find their way to our soul. May this be a blessing. Amen. 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 May this be a blessing. Amen. Shabbat shalom to everyone. Shabbat shalom, shalom, shalom everyone. Shalom. Thank you for uh, um, being a part of our service this evening. Shabbat shalom to uh, Rabbi Kaplan and Cantor Koratan and to all of our readers um, and who have participated in helping make our service complete this evening. Um, once again, we're going to unmute in a moment and leave it open for um, everyone to say hello to each other. Um, I'm going to uh, then turn the host duties over to the rabbi. We look forward to seeing um, our celebrants tomorrow um, as we definitely um, bring in a Shabbat of Simcha, uh, much joy um, as we celebrate our bar and our bat mitzvah. Um, tomorrow morning. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. There, I think so. Rabbi, there are two.